Beltalota, what coming good, Copang Me? Or, hello, Belters, welcome, friends, to Dark Loops Productions, The Expanse Crew, a podcast for discussing Amazon Prime's fantastic sci fi series, The Expanse. I'm your host, Dr. Scott Jordan, aka Zombie Scotty, cognitive psychologist, philosopher at Illinois State University. And tonight we discuss season six, episode four, Redoubt. Beltalota, please introduce yourselves and say a little something about who you are, and we will start with Leandra. Hey, I'm Leandra Paris. I'm an assistant professor and coordinator of school psychology at William and Mary out here in Virginia. Yeah. Fantastic. How about you, Sister Jay? Uh, I'm Sister Jay, uh, a part of the Sister Speak uh, podcast series of podcasts. The J is for Jennifer. I'm a retired lawyer and a crime fiction novelist. That's fantastic. And how about you, <laughs> Sister K? I am Sister K, aka Kelsey, and I am also a co host of the Sister Speak series of podcasts. And um, I'm happy to be here with everybody. Fantastic. So <laughs> before we start talking about this fantastic episode, I have had a, an intense experience of synchronicity. Uh, this last week where seemingly unrelated events are completely related, or at least they feel that way. So first of all, I was driving from Norma, Illinois to somewhere in Florida, as you know, and I want you to just notice this shirt I'm wearing. <laughs> okay, This is the Sister Speak Family Reunion 2017. Nashville. I was on the road long enough to listen to that whole damn podcast. I know! <laughs> Oh. <laughs> that's a long ass time <laughs> that's about seven hours plus of uh really good content that was definitely better if you were there um yeah, it was fun it was and fun. while i was in florida i actually had the opportunity to experience uh what uh nashville hot chicken should taste like <laughs> so this, this is a nashville hot chicken sandwich i got at a, at a wonderful place in florida <laughs> Oh, that looks yummy. Uh, I, I thought about you guys the whole time. And uh, I can't tell you, there were no dead white fly strips hanging on the wall. Nothing like that. <laughs> Thank goodness. Oh, that hot chicken debacle is famous. Let me oh, tell you. Oh, Lord have mercy. Um, <laughs> so um, That did look good. Yeah, I think what I'm going to do is we'll just do viewer mail at the end here, right? We did get three two or three emails from from one person and <laughs> they were very enthusiastic and they love what we're doing so um great so what we're going to do is what we usually do here favorite line favorite scene favorite character whatever you want and i am not in florida and my glasses are still fucking up <laughs> it's still really humid we're still at 86 percent humidity oh, here even wow Y'all being cold and sweaty at the same time is awful. <laughs> you can't, and, and these days, being cold and sweaty is just not a good thing. It, no, it's not really a good not. feeling to have. No. <laughs> so, who wants to talk <sighs> first? Favorite character, favorite line, favorite scene? Well, I'll go first because I'm sorry. Well, I, I'm glad to say my love for Amos has been supplanted. By drama. Yes, yeah. I knew it's it. my I favorite. Like, I mean, yeah. I still love Avis, but you beat drama, me it. <laughs> drama, drama is my girl. She is yes. just awesome. Okay, I, I'll go through this really, really quickly. No, take your time. The, it's all okay. good. Uh, the first oh, thing boy. that blew my mind is, is drummer floating out in space with her crew, waiting to Get that supply uh, uh, station. I, that that was just awesome, awesome. Amazing. And how they dropped down and everything. It, oh, it was great. Then of course we have to, you know, Michio cutting off Joseph's uh, arm just mm. to save his life. That was really great. But let's give it up for drama with the broadcast worldwide. <laughs> <laughs> no. Challenging Marcos and Aros calling him all Not kind of names and stuff. And But this is the part that got me the most. At the end of all of her spiel, what she say? Live shamed and die Not empty. empty. Oh, that was just too, <laughs> too tough for me. I, I was hooping. Yeah. <laughs> In front of the TV. It was just awesome. So. Well, with the I five of them floating out, oh. 
<laughs> well, no, the only thing with the five of them floating out in space or four of them getting ready to yeah. attack. That's the right thing. It's like the only thing missing was the monster van. <laughs> <laughs> So good. That I was so yeah. cool. It was so, it was cool. so cool. Was. And the way they're like the supply things are kind of like orbiting each other. Mm-hmm. It was the yes. Thing. I really feel like they are giving us like some really lovely sci-fi. It's such a good story. Yes. And yes. they are also giving us wonderful sci-fi shots that I have been sorely missing because of so many things are taking place on stations and stuff. Just even the way she cut it and she was like, nope. You're because I'm like blow it up. She's like, no, 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 no. Just oh, like, well, out but, it. but it was just as they're floating down, she sent grapples and I, they all go shoot their little stuff and then they drop. Oh, it was just, it just awesome. Sucks them in. And, mm-hmm. I and know the camera awesome. angle because you thought they were going to go all the way to the one of the other exactly. one. Exactly. Boom, the other one comes up. It's like, man, someone's thinking about me. <laughs> it's just happen. like you could tell they couldn't see past yeah. their field of vision. So you're seeing their field of vision and to like mm. time that yeah. you're right though that i got a little sci-fi blasting. part is so excellent so it's just good. oh it's really good i love that i love those series of scenes too sister jay because i liked how drummer without saying anything i don't know why i like those face moments mm. me too me. but without saying anything she was given she could recognize or respect michio again yes yeah. Because Michio ain't no punk. Nope. She didn't panic. Right. She's like, oh, <laughs> let me drive on over to y'all. She came mm-hmm. in. She's like, okay, nope, this is what we got to do. Da-da-da. Oh, lift it up. Now, what I didn't understand was when they lifted it up, why couldn't they just pull his arm out? But whatever. Because it was stuck That's under funny. that other one. Oh, uh, it was stuck under another one? Right, right. Okay. It the was a mess. That was gone. And that was yeah. like, that was actually like some legit, like. And he was, I, I mean, it was crushed. It was crushed. Crushed. And so, then, you know, she just was like, okay, I'm sorry. I love you. Bop, 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 cut, cut, cut. Bam. <laughs> and then, I mean, she didn't. And then I loved it Ooh. later when they were, when she was, they were in the recovery room or wherever yeah. he was at. And she was like, okay, look at me. You're good. And she was watching from afar, drummer. And you can see in her face, like, oh, no, oh, no. Yep. I'm not going to let this sit now. Because what this really yep. was is mm-hmm. we should even have to be out here exactly. scavenging <laughs> for stuff. When you got, I mean, them things was huge. Yeah. Mm-hmm. All those little uh, shipping containers put together was humongous. That they was all seen. surprise and stuff he was all hoarding. Surprise. Awesome. They could be feeding yeah. people. I thought we made it. Go ahead, Leandro. Go I was ahead. Gonna go say, ahead. I love too that like it showed that healing is also just as powerful as being able to shoot a rocket or a missile. Like yep. she can't shoot anything. She may flinch when it comes to killing someone, but like she can come in and she can save someone's life. And I feel like yes. that, that we needed to be able to see that. And I also think that like, I don't know, that just that whole thing of her like cutting the supply and the whole like unbroken, unbent, unbowed. I was like, yes. <laughs> Yes, yes. I kind of heard a rap thing in the background, right? Yeah, I, mean, I know. <laughs> Sing it, put a beat to it, like go, like oh. I knew I she was going. I knew she was going to get nasty when she said worldwide calm. Yep. yep. Oh, I, I gotta tell you what. You know how many times have we seen people get hurt and stabbed, and it's intense. What worked for me as I watched it again, because that that when I watched that scene the second time, I was sucking in my breath because when she kisses him and says, I love you and I'm sorry. Now she's completely empathizing with all of his pain as she does the work she's got to do. And that just opens the door empathy for us that we don't have opened when we're watching someone kill someone they hate. Right. And for me, doing that in that scene made that scene. I mean, we would have felt bad for him no matter what, but to have a friend right, right. to cry while she's doing it and boom, just mm-hmm. amplifies the empathy incredibly. Mm-hmm. I, I was just. Fantastic. Well, and, and likewise, when drummer is is watching her yep. lovingly, you know, uh, 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 caressing Joseph and, and, you know, telling him, uh, OK, Everything's fine now. You're fine. That just like broke up her. She's oh, mm. like this case said. She, oh, hell no. Mm. Let, me, let me tell this sucker something, you know. <laughs> and she went on. But she was so good. She's so good. And they throw like the most of- fantastic little lines in there. Like I for, I keep forgetting the old guys, dude, who joined their crew. But after she cuts the arm off and everything, the old guy says, steady work, cargo. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> That was so good. 
<laughs> yeah. Can you imagine how much fun it is to write that line? Oh, yeah. And that guy says steady work He's cargo. Like, I, I just oh, I just love it. Yeah, I tell yeah. you, they. Mm, yeah, that's the best. That's the best. So it's like look, also kind of I felt like kind of a uh, drummer in that moment was kind of like me. Like when I get when like somebody gets hurt or your child gets hurt and you're scared for them. I tend to get angry. I don't know why it just happens. And it's like, I'm going to hurt was the world. Thing. Like I'm like, she couldn't deal with the fact that she was scared. So that's I went to point. anger to mm-hmm. Marcos and like everything that's led up to that moment, like her half and her other wives and husbands leaving last season and meet that she was about to send off somewhere because she couldn't hack the life of scavengery that they had to beat. I don't think that's a word, but the scavenger life that they've had to live on since all of that happened and her almost making Michio go and then seeing all of this. And now Joseph is hurt. It's just all culminated. I think to her, like, Oh, bump this. I, I, I'm not going to give into my fear. I'm just going to blast his butt. Yeah. And, and, and she challenged him to up the bounty. She said, yeah, come find me if you want to. And yeah. if you can, <laughs> you know I, mean? I, yeah. I was like, but until then, <laughs> huh, let me tell you something. We ain't I'm gonna, gonna break. No, gonna she said, I'm gonna take all your she she. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna take it all. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, because yeah. they're gonna go to the next one. Because because she um oh his name is something Walker, I think. The other the other yeah. little captain pirate person. He knows where all those depot stations are. Yep. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So yeah, that was, that was a great good. that was a great scene. So I don't remember the name of Marcos's XO, Marcos XO, the blonde Rosenfeld. woman, uh, Rosenfeld. Rosenfeld. I got. Rosenfeld. She's got my favorite line for the week again. Oh yeah. Where Philip says, "Oh yeah." Well, what do you think Marco would say if I if I shot you in the face? And she goes, "Oh well, he probably sent a letter to the family that was meant to be sympathetic, but it was really just guilt." Oh wait a minute! I wrote it down. Let, oh, let me read do. it for you. Let me read it for you, word <laughs> for word. Philip said. What do you think my father would do if I shot you in the face? And he's sneering the whole time. Mm-hmm. She says, she looked at him and said, I don't know. Probably feel really guilty about it. Then send money to my family and pretend it's remorse. And I went to the TV. <laughs> boom. <laughs> she got him. Did you see the look on his face? Yep. Mm-hmm. She's been doing that to that whole crew. That's the thing. Yeah. Everybody knows that she knows. No, and then later yeah. on, there's a scene with with Marco and her where it's like she's uh, running things. Yeah, well, <laughs> she is. I mean, that's in the end. I she's yeah. gonna take him out in the battle of a fight with Drummer. Yeah. I, I think. I think she's kind of had it, he and then right. uh, she and Drummer are gonna rule the ring, and uh, maybe give the Earthers a little cut. I don't know, but. <laughs> You could tell that when she said, I think I've earned it. When he asked her, Yeah, why, you know, yeah. why are you what doing do you this? want? What do you mm-hmm. want? She wants to run um the way station. She wants mm-hmm. the governorship of Medina. Yeah. Like Which is that answer, way? Like her answer was really good. It wasn't I deserve it. It wasn't you owe no, me. It wasn't yeah. I've earned, earned it. it. Uh-huh. Yes. I earned yep. it. Like, I've earned it dealing with yo janky butt. Well, yes, that's, <laughs> that's exactly what you right. say. Yeah. And you know, I'm raising both you and your son. This is a hard <laughs> job. Yeah. <laughs> that's exactly it. And it's kind of that's, as if he enjoys true. being babied. Yeah. There is a bit of enjoyment that because I do think she's smarter than he is. Yet she I is. do think when she insults him that way, he knows the joke thoroughly. I don't think it's going over his head. No, no. It's not. And he and there's this well played part that mm-hmm. that he digs on because he's so notice, foolish enough but, to think he's in charge. But did you but notice she, he is still saying to her after what his mother yeah. did to me? And I'm thinking, oh wait a minute, hold up, hold up, you are still there. Yep. Yeah, he's still he's there. Still there. That's, he has to yes. be. Yes. Yeah. If, I mean, that's that's what I was gonna ask you guys because I the at the end when Philip realizes, right when drummer calls out Marco and does it in front of all the people, and then he just had that conversation with a brother on you know the guy who's got a brother on series blah right, blah blah right. blah blah. You know he knows that is what his dad's doing. 
Yet when someone calls his dad out a little bit after that speech, he goes, "Who? she's just as much a threat as, you know, mm-hmm. and he goes off on another. So, you know, he and his dad are both kind of stuck in this narcissistic thing where the minute they, they give stuck. up on Naomi being the villain, they're done. They have no basis right. for any of their hate. Yeah. They suddenly see that they're just idiots. And um, or as someone uh, someone said, just, uh, you know, every every argument that men have used against feminism. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Forever. honestly, like, I was really disappointed when he stood up after that, because I yeah. felt like he was seeing a whole other side to what they did at series. I felt mm-hmm. like he was finally kind of seeing like the, the toll it was having, even the people who were on their side or on their ship fighting for them. He's just realized that somebody, I'm assuming he thinks it's his mother, disarmed that missile. Like, yeah, you have all that in your face and yet you still have this knee jerk reaction. He is so resistant. He He had to though, but wait, Mm -hmm. he had to. I don't think he really would have, except everybody was looking at him. Like, what you gonna say? What you gonna do? Like, he can't come off as no punk. He had to stand up and and save his face in the face of all of that was being said. He, I think he still thinks of Marco that way. I think he agrees Mm -hmm. with Drummer, but he can't come out and say that. Did you see his face as he's walking down the hall? Yeah, he was like, his face kind of broke a little bit like shit. Yes. Well, he's not like his words are really interesting because he was like, because if we don't do this, all of this is for nothing. So I can't saying like, I've started down a path. Yep. I sold my soul, so to speak. So if I don't see this through, then it really was in vain. And yeah. I've done all of this for nothing. So like, that's what his mother tried to tell him. Yeah. Well, his mother started to, I think, I think he is going through oscillations, right? Because he yeah. understands Naomi. He mm-hmm. understands Marco. Because like it or not, Marco's the guy who took the action, like we talked about last time, that started this stuff for the belters that no one else was going to do. So I think Philip is kind of oscillating in this space right now. And I don't know that we're going to see him firmly end up on one side or the other. I, I, Oh, he's going to be with his daddy because he knows now he has seen uh, and heard the reports. He knows now that his father was the one that sabotaged the uh, Mm. series. He so you knows. think he's so you think he's gonna side with his dad? Is that what you said? Oh yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. Because I it, so. it's that male ego thing. Yeah. He's yeah, going yeah. totally Anakin Skywalker on his here. Oh, so. oh yeah, 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 the yeah. Dark yeah. side. Yeah. 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 I don't think he will. I think I that think was so. just a safe face in the moment because he had people looking at him and he didn't he had to, he felt like he had to say something. Even though he was trying to act like he's just another worker, like when he went to that new job. And the guy was mm-hmm. talking mess and then mm-hmm. realized who Philip was. Philip was like, okay, look, I'm just a worker here. I don't know anything. T- teach me like, you know, basically tell me what I need to do. Right. Your ship, your rules. What he says later, yeah. like he's trying to make it to where he's just another worker. He I don't think Marcos so. His son. Hmm. He did but that because that his moment, daddy said you demoted. No. Well, no, because I think he's, ir- well, yeah, he wouldn't be there unless his dad made him go. But I think now that he's there, he's not using the fact that he's in Anaros to not work. He was working. But my so do point you think is, he's- I think he's going to, because of that moment was so in your face and he had everybody looking public. at him. It was public. He felt like he had to Very do public. the Marcos thing. And he and just got chewed out. Speech. He just yeah. got chewed out by what? The, by the XO. You got to support your dad here. So, you guys, you don't think he's clever enough to be marching up to Marco saying, "Dude, we need to talk in private." You're no. losing it. You don't think he's no. that clever enough to do that? Okay. No. I don't know. I think it's one or the other. I think yeah. he's either fully trying to go through his, you know, cacophony he's got going on right now, or he was saying that to buy himself time because he knows he's got to get back on the flight deck. Mm. He's going to change anything, and the only way he's going to do that is if he gets through it. Mm-hmm. And I like I'm kind of torn with him because in one minute, you know, he's blaming the other guy for him losing his, uh, you know, he was distracted by the news. And that's why he lost the thing. And he like blames it on him, which is a very narcissistic thing to do. It's your fault. But then the next minute, he's like, you're skiff your rules. Like, so like he's like very much warring with himself. I don't think he knows what he's going to do. Now, he is his daddy's son. His daddy has had a lifetime to brainwash that Come boy to the dark side. Yeah. I mean, and it's exactly like Luke Skywalker. That would be better if he did it. And and I do believe that if 
if and when they kill Marcos, they're going to kill him, too, because I think he's going to be fighting with the father. Hmm. And wh- whether he intends to sacrifice himself or not, I think they both end up dead. Hmm. We shall see. You yeah, know, we I, shall yep. see. I mean, the thing is, there is. And that would be a good thing. There is a story about broken families here. And there is a story oh, about sure. men talking crap about their former wives in the presence of their kid. And then we all know that stuff happens in this world. Well, and, and, and women do it too, though. Yeah. No, for fair enough. Men. Fa- fair yeah. enough. The question is, what do you do in that space? And what they've done well in this show is surround him with a host of characters who are pulling him in different directions and showing him, you know, you got what Naomi said. You got what uh, the XO is saying. You've got all these people that are providing him somewhat different perspectives. I, I, all I can say is and when you're in that space, you have to recognize, you don't have to recognize nothing, but you are caught up in a habit you've been taught. Right through right. through a life, and you either follow that habit or you break out of it, and you usually break out of it by identifying with others. You know, it's you don't identify with the person you're trying to be different from. So, we'll see if there's enough people in his space to. He's but been he, trying, he's, he's been, been brainwashed out. from the time he was a, an, an infant, according yeah. to Naomi. But he's and, been breaking out of it though. So mm-hmm. it's not that he's totally Marcos because otherwise he would never have called him out saying we, why do we even go through that fight? He would never have done that if Naomi hadn't been there to give him a different perspective and yeah. him thinking of it in a different way. So I don't think he's all the way gone into that dark mindset, but I do think that he felt a need to, kind of reassert that part of him. I don't know. I don't know. I think I'm we have totally whittled wrong. this issue down. I don't think his ego is going to let him do anything. I think we've whittled this dead. issue down to a small enough number of options where we could actually set up a wager. <laughs> <laughs> yes, oh, Lord, let's wager. Mm, mm, mm. <laughs> so one option that is he dies before he stops oscillating. In other words, he doesn't land anywhere. He just dies and never really had it resolved the other options are that he identifies with marco and whatever that means or he identifies with someone else and so those are the three options i think uh, i almost feel they're going to have him die before he resolves and i wish they'd almost done that last episode uh, instead of the with the dud. dud, you guys know. I, I thought if they had let that thing not be a dud, that would have yeah, been TV that's history what you said last week. Yeah. That I mean, the the depth of Holden's. I mean, that argument we saw. We we'll talk about Naomi and Holden this week, right? But it would have been a wholly different conversation if if he had not let you know if he hadn't de- deactivated that nuke. And mm-hmm. if, I'm, I don't say I wanted that to happen because I like it. I say that would have been kind of history <laughs> there to see that kind of play out and. What do the characters do after that? So I don't know. I think he might die before he resolves. That's my vote. What about you? Everybody's got to take a position <laughs> now. So we can all give each other crap later. He's going to betray Marcus. Okay. So it's he's Luke Skywalker. I, I think he's going to go the other way. Or he's not going to full out betray him, but he's not going to be on his side. Like you, you whittled it down to the three options, right? One is that he sticks with his dad. One is that he just does something else. And I think he's going to do something else. Okay. I agree. I agree with that too. Something else. Sister uh, Jay, you think he'll stay with his dad? He's going to stay with his dad. I, I don't believe his, with his ego, he, yeah. that would allow him to go the other way. I love it. He's going to go down with the dad. What's the outcome of this wager? What did I just, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Hey, yo, what we did we get? Well, pride, of course. I mean, these are publicly broadcast. <laughs> bragging podcasts. rights. But I don't, I don't care ego. about, I, hey, you know what? Do I don't care about no know. bragging rights. I want something real, tangible. <laughs> I love it. Well, I, so any okay. other, we, we've done drummer, we've done, let's talk about the whole Holden Bobby Amos thing. Cause, you know, and, and Peaches and the whole, cause you did mention, that uh, drummer became your famous, your favorite character over Amos. And I think the Amos, the Amos Holden conflict was something we're not used to seeing Amos mm-hmm. in. Yeah, I so, would say that was my favorite scene. 
Okay, like, go ahead, that, please. That's going to be my thing late because okay, go. there was one line that Amos said where he said, I can always trust you to do what you think is the right thing. And I thought that was a really interesting way of phrasing that, not the right thing, like what mm-hmm. you think is the yes. right thing, which mm-hmm. I think is, speaks to Amos's very nuanced understanding of people. And I love that he is actually, because I think one, this goes against my initial impression of him, right? Like I thought he just was not going to be this complicated of a character. And yeah. I'm pleasantly surprised. Um, and he basically was like, I'm trying to figure out in what world this was right. And I can't do it. Like, you've got to help me out here. He doesn't accuse him. Although I think, you know, confronting him while they're out in space was a little bit. Didn't you think ridiculous. he was going to like bop him or something? Oh, yeah. I, I don't know. I didn't think <laughs> no. he was He approached like, fairly squarely. I mean, <laughs> when, it was just like a very he, like. He got to walk real close up on him. I thought, okay, now don't hit him now because he's going to. You know, going out. Oh, I didn't think he would like hurt him, but I do think you're in the vacuum of space having a conversation. So my one, I love that he's that nuanced. I love that entire way that he called him out and tried to basically say like, you got to help me understand. Like, I'm not judging you. I'm not trying to like accuse you of anything, but like we could have stopped this whole war. And he really played out the mm. stakes really well. My one question is, does Amos not know about Philip? Like, why didn't he just say, I couldn't kill my lover's son? Like, Amos would understand that. I think Amos Mm. would totally understand. I couldn't let my lover see her son Mm. die in front of her. That's a good point. He knows about Philip, though, but I don't know if he knows Philip was on that ship. But why didn't he just say that? It's Amos, their family. Like, everyone, why can't we just be on the up and up about this? Like, I don't see the reason to keep it such a big secret because I, while I don't agree with it, can totally understand why you would flinch at the idea of killing Mm -hmm. the love of your life's kid, particularly when the whole series started with you losing your own child. You know Mm. what I mean? Like we should understand that. So I'm Mm -hmm. very confused why he was like, "Eh." no, so I get you because I, you guys are going to hate me because I told you, I wish they had let the bomb go off, but now I'm glad they didn't because we get all this conflict on Mm -hmm. the Rasanate, right? Rasanate. I mean, we, this is at the core of their problem. And what I love about it is it puts Holden in this global versus local space. That whole moment was, and I'm sorry, but Holden's right. I can't be the guy who killed your kid. Now, we may think, yeah, bigger things. What I love about it is they honestly express Holden being stuck in that conflict. And he made his choice. And I got to tell you what, I do like what he said to Amos. I do not owe you an explanation. It was my True. call to make. You guys have been asking me to be your leader for six seasons. Okay, so don't do it now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but if uh, Leandro's right, he could have came out and say, what, am I supposed to kill Naomi's kid? Is that what you want? I mean, I, 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 so he didn't do that. And I think he didn't mm-hmm. do that because he was a little taken aback because that whole scene was set up to make it make it clear that he was surprised that Amos knew he was yeah yeah he didn't have a reaction ready uh yeah, and yeah, and, and hard, they hard. it's not like I've never been in situations where when I'm surprised I just say I don't owe you an explanation <laughs> oh gosh you know, but uh <laughs> well that's the only reason he told Naomi is because he knew it was gonna get around oh you think so you don't oh, think sure. he'd have told her no either way? It was well, going to her. It was Amos confronting him was enough, I think, too. Like, I don't, I, whether he's feel... getting around or not, like, when you have a secret like that and someone, like, pokes at it, it's going to come out. He's going to come well, clean the first of all, Amos and, and Naomi have history yes. that hold and don't even begin to understand the depth of. And Amos is the one who confronted him with it. Of course, he's going to go, Right and tell but Naomi because otherwise even, Amos going. No, I don't think or, he would. Because I think, him and Naomi I don't think he would have. But but I think that's what Holden's mind is. Mm. That's why Naomi he went and told her. And Amos aren't like that right now. They're still. Well, we know that, but, but well, that's right. She tried I think to kick Holden. Off. I think that conversation with Amos brought a little bit of guilt to Holden, and he had to let it out by talking to Naomi about yeah. it. And also that conversation with um, Peaches didn't, you know, probably help spur him on to do the same. Oh, with Holden? Yeah. Yeah, well, yeah. Holden and Peaches, I mean, when But that he was, was after the... Naomi, though. No, it was before, wasn't it? No, it was after. 
Um, I don't remember. It was um, after chronologically in the film. It was after his conversation with Naomi, where she said, don't take that away from me. He's in no, the I kitchen. think it was before because Peaches had said, oh, I'm not going to say anything to anyone. No, she said, Peaches said, I'm not going to say anything to her, meaning Bobby, because Bobby was in the kitchen complaining about the dud torpedo seal. Mm. <laughs> yeah. Oh, no, Bobby she, was hot the whole right, episode. But Peaches, <laughs> Peaches said that in reference to Bobby, not to Naomi. He okay. had that conversation with Naomi before. He See, what I, what I remember is uh, Holden looking at Peaches and saying, uh, that's a lot of salt. And <laughs> uh, that was at the end of the whole she conversation. Said, I, like she it says, like I like it that way. No, and then she put some more on there, too. <laughs> Honey, I <laughs> like that. You know that's what? I know, I know a person the who does food. that. I know a person who does that. Really? Mm-hmm. My best friend used to do that. They had she had like, come up I on the front of her lobe. <laughs> And like she had like a lot of chloride beans and he was sorry. Just no, it's all good. The whole frontal lobe thing. So, <laughs> what is I that, like is that your thing, Sister Gay? Or is that it you? must be because oh, she'd be shaking that. Mm. I don't know if it's a frontal lobe thing, but I just have a salty. T- I just like salt. Oh, I trust myself. Look, if an elephant knows when it needs salt, I know when I need salt. That's just all there is to it. See, right? there you go. That's what I'm going to say. You know. <laughs> you they make their way to the caves and they lick the walls. That's I'm just saying, you know. Okay, but let's They talk got that about, big brain, too. You're right. Let's, but talk, I, about, let's I, talk about the, the cutest, the cutest scene. The cutest scene in the I think old that's show. up for a vote, boss. Before I'm No, no, no. <laughs> You're gonna agree with me. And that's when Bobby. And Amos are humming that country tune mm. and they're humming the lyrics. That yeah. was rolling. That was I, so cute. I don't know if that was cute. Because I was like, even when someone's, it reminds us that even when someone's gone, like they still bring people together. Right. And they still create a narrative that people existed. And I mm-hmm. thought that was a really touching moment. Although I at that point, it. I was like, don't we only really have two episodes left? Like, why well, are that's we the thing. country songs? Like, get to I know. No, yeah. <laughs> for me, it was a it was a I way to get it. Bobby or to get the guy back into the narrative. Right. Because like I said, they were bringing all these old stories back in. So when we get to these last two episodes, we're going to experience mm-hmm. all of it. And they're probably going to give us an ending, something like uh, six feet under ending or right. You know, they're going to bring. All oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember six feet under and yeah. show their yeah. their lives in the future. Mm-hmm. I, I what I liked is that. um we can argue about who was right or who was wrong, but that's us, right? What I like about the writing is I <laughs> believed Holden. I believed yeah. Holden saying, I couldn't kill your kid. Right. And I can believe Naomi yeah. saying, well, don't take that choice from me. Damn it. Didn't you see? I already did all this. I made a choice. Exactly. Today. What she should have said that she didn't say, and I don't know why they didn't write it is, did I tell you to not fire? Did I tell right. you? To, exactly. Yeah. I tell, I yeah. Mean, that would have been a like little. She already more made her peace. With right. Him See, dying. we talked about that last time. Yeah, that she had she had made made her peace with it. So yeah. Mm-hmm. So everybody had their own lived perspective, and they argued it out. Yeah, I love it. Leandra, I would have told her. I would have told her back. Well, okay, you made your pieces, but I still can't do it, and have you looking at me like I'm the one who killed your kid. Yeah. And that's a conversation Which was what it was, have, right? Like, and I do, I love that. That was my second favorite line where she was like, don't take this away from me because there's a lot of agency issues with Naomi right now in terms yeah. of like what she has control over, what she's been able to recover from and heal. And like all the men in her life are making all these decisions about <laughs> her without her. And here's the love yeah. of her life basically being like, yeah, I mean, yeah, you did the right thing, I guess. You didn't kill my kid, but like I made the choice that this is what the outcome was going to be. But I can also respect Holden being like, I'm not going to be the one. Someone else can kill him. I'm I agree with Holden. Yeah, yeah. I agree with Holden. I, agree I love with the Holden impossibility. Too. I would yeah. not have been the, been the person to kill to my one. lover's kid. He's just no. too perfect, though. Man, make his mistake. No, I, 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 <laughs> I, I do dig Naomi's honest. You know, wait a minute, dude. When the minute you you deactivated that bomb. You made me the bad guy, right? Because because I had already given, I had already said this can play out. I didn't tell you not to stop. Yeah. And now the minute you stop, you, you you put me in this space again. And I get that. But he's saying, well, I ain't holding that hot potato. And so they're all passing yeah. it around as to who. And, you know, gonna- until she said that, though, I, I did not look at it in that perspective. But mm. I could see her point. Because as soon as she said it, I thought, ooh, you know what? Mm. That's a good point. 
because the narrative is always going to be Holden couldn't do it because of her. Yes. And you know what I mean? As opposed to what Holden yes. said, which is that I saw a scared kid. Yes. Which I think is the reality. I, maybe he would have been more likely if it wasn't Philip, but if he looked and saw in the background a scared kid, which is what he sees, I think he still would have hesitated. Maybe not. I think it would have. Well, but like he, he hesitated. Like mm-hmm. he said, he looks a lot like you. So that was like killing a part of her. Yeah. And he couldn't do it. Yeah. He said, he looks just like you. Yeah. Oh, he's and then he's like, I couldn't <laughs> do it, you know? Yeah. Mm-hmm. No, I, I love so. it. I, we, when we first started talking about this series, I, you know, we talked about how they put these people in impossible yet believable situations, right? Impossible and believable. And I, if I'm a writer, that's what I want. I want you guys all, I want us all sitting around a campfire arguing about who was wrong, right? Or who was right. That's <laughs> that's what I want. Because and the answer is no one is wrong exactly. or right. Except right. for the little girl who's about to take her brother to go get healed. That's the only person. Oh, Lord. Okay. Okay. It's okay. going to be pet cemetery. Right it's going to okay. be pet cemetery, okay. like you said. I got a mother effing bone to pick with this. Crap. All right, go ahead. I knew, I knew that when I was okay. Up arms, I'm just gonna sit back. You know, I am so daggum annoyed with this story. Don't her parents even watch this kid? That she no. has such unsupervised a, a, a freedom to take a whole gurney out into the uh, the woods. <laughs> Come on! Oh, I was so annoyed. I was so annoyed. I had daydreams of. Uh taking the uh, the playbill from the movie Pet Cemetery and <laughs> morphing in the little purple dog. And yeah. and uh, this is creepy. And Just when crazy. I noticed this time when the little bird came out alive, it had purple lips like the dog, yes, man. Yeah, it did. It's and it was great. His face was great. Oh, Lord have mercy. I'm telling you, it's going to be a thing. I will say, not to completely change it, but like it, that scene with the little girl the president of their little thing or whoever the teacher mm, or that yeah. guy is. Admiral he Duarte. put a lot of stuff on a little girl that he was, was annoying. People. He was annoying. You know, watch her and you're like, I had to let go of my whole planet and th- we lie to you and we tell you it's going to be okay. What are they doing to her? I'm going to tell you what that was. That was a film version of what some writers do in their books. That was an info dump yeah. and I resented it. Immensely. Yeah. Oh, yeah, so that's okay. what that whole backstory on this dude. So we're supposed to care about him. Yeah, yeah. that was an info the... dump, so he could put all this info out there because they didn't yeah. know any other that's way to get what it. it was. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It, yeah. It, it was. Okay, you said that was a admiral. I think his yeah. name was Admiral yeah. Duarte. They called him admiral. When that guy came no. up. He used to be. Ooh, I can't remember what season it was. He was he was running something on Mars at the mm-hmm. time. But he's not the guy summer. that disappeared into the rain. No, no, that's no, not that's him. that other guy. The Bar Keith one. No, yeah. I'm yeah. like just trying to get all the, you know, they, I don't know. I know. Yeah. They put them in a uniform. I just thought it was right odd because at first I was like, okay, this is sounding really predatorial. Yes. <laughs> yes. And I was like, why is he even sitting by her telling her all this stuff? Like, Info lie, dump. but it's for a certain reason. And I was just waiting for him to say, boo, don't tell nobody what I tell you. Yeah. It was well, that's really a little dumb. bit of telling us, not showing us. Oh, yeah. yeah. That's what yeah. it was for. It was annoying. But that I'm creepy kid, like- that creepy ass kid pulling, taking a whole gurney with her brother. <laughs> well, first of all, voice. I was like, okay, Jeez, so I hate that. I understand that that was the wake, but how is it that she had? He was still there, free to be snatched gone. up. Like, free to be, excuse me, rolled out. That's yeah, yeah. what I'm saying. No adult supervision or nothing. All the damn adults in the house. Yeah, no, I do a, appreciate them slipping in well, and what happened to him, though. Like, he just ran out. Oh, yeah. Of a, like, so that actually car. made me feel like I did appreciate that. Yes. Yeah. At the same time, that's still Pet cemetery because the kid gets ran over by a truck. So, like, can y'all just, like, no. not do this to us? Can you not do this to us? I tell you what, I so he's not, gonna be purple. He's gonna be purple and gray. Well, he oh, is. Yeah. No, and he's gonna he, be he, killing up everybody. And, <laughs> and he's not gonna know what he's doing, no, right? That's yeah, I mean, exactly. That's he's gonna be killing like up about. his parents and the little girl and yeah. everything else. That's the reason I, I couldn't that, go too that bird far. Didn't kill nobody. 
Well, we don't know that. To... We don't know that that bird didn't that kill bird baby. All those other little birds. Right. Those, those were it's babies following it. We don't I mean, know what happened to them babies. We ain't seen them since. No. There's only two ways this goes, right? He either gets a whole bunch of information he doesn't understand and completely goes haywire or becomes an omnipotent being and just cures everything and saves everything. No. Oh, he's he's going to become Dr. No. Manhattan. No. There you gonna, go. Straight up. There it is. I'm just saying. <laughs> I don't want that be. to see how they close this up, he's but there are other right options. He's going to be killing everybody. Watch. Mm-hmm. I, if he does. Clean it up before he gets a chance to get off of it. Yeah, if he does, I hope if, if if he comes back and something happens to other people because of him, I hope it's what I didn't like about Pet Cemetery. Pet Cemetery it was so vicious. In other words, they came back to life, but then they were murderous. I mean, it, it wasn't that they just came back to life; it's that they were from hell. And they, ah. so, if he comes back to life and he's accidentally killing people because they don't, you know, proto molecule in them for some reason, I'll take that. That no, you know, whatever. No, I can't control no. that. No, no, I'm going to be real mad if they do that. Oh, it's going to happen. Just wait. I don't think this Laconia, to be honest, I ain't spoiling nothing. I don't think I haven't read the books. Yeah, but I, I think either. they're using this Laconia story to uh, leave the door open for additional a movie. years. I think. Come back. I think a spinoff yeah. or a movie or something. Yeah. I would love a movie. Like they did, t- uh, Jesus, if they're going to have those space fights, I'll take the movie. <laughs> I do love these space. I wouldn't mind different. another series since this one's finishing, you know. Nah, this yeah. Well, yeah. It depends on what it on what, is and who's yeah. in it. Right. Because I'm not gonna say I mean if they want to do a spin-off on drummer, yeah. Yeah. Yep. No, I I mean it, it'll be fun to see it's fun to see Lord listen, all this violence. It'll be fun to see for me how what threads are they gonna tie off, right? I mean what are They've they going to consider the end of the series yeah. to be, right? Uh, because you're not going; they're not going to blow up the rings, and they're all going to be gone. And it's right. not going to no. happen, right? That's, yeah. All that stuff is still going to be possible. So I think they're going to lean on the characters that we've gotten to know. I think so, and you know, end the series through them. Um, and I think, I, and and I don't think we're going to find out unless there is a spinoff or like a, a a standalone movie or something about whatever civilization. Killed off the proto molecule pe- beings or whatever. Yeah, I don't think we're gonna get that. I think it's gonna be yeah. a lot of the White Walker situation where like they've they've got too many loose threads out there and they're just gonna yeah let it go yeah. Was that yeah? The dang old White Walkers, where they come from? Yeah, what happened to that little baby that he touched and had the blue eyes? <laughs> what about the symbols? I can't believe the dead body. Y'all, hey, man, I got a go. Star Wars contract. I don't have to answer those questions. All right, let's <laughs> let it go. We'll I never know. know. Let it go. I, know. I think these guys would be clever enough to leave those threads, at least acknowledging them. I think, mm. for example, I, like I said, I really wish they would have tied up the Marco thing earlier uh, so that we could see some fighting over Medina Station. We could see some fighting over who's going to run the rings and, and then dress the rings and the future of the rings gotcha. is the end mm. instead of oh, let's go marco I, I really hope right because i mean at least for the next episode it, they're still at war so that's what's going to be the focus yeah i mean i wouldn't mind if rosenfield or whoever like does end up controlling it would be nice in my opinion if she kills marcos comes to the inners and all of that and says look i've taken care of your problem i'm gonna keep medina or whatever yeah. you can come up with a treaty or what have you but we're mm-hmm. the belters are keeping it like i'm okay with that i want yep. her to have it like she she's has pragmatic it. like that too yeah. though you know she so is. yeah and i think that that would be a good way to wrap it up i just mm-hmm. i don't know i still don't know how they're going to get from point a to point b in two episodes but you know what? <laughs> <laughs> yeah i think you're right yeah. she's depends on the on what same ship with marcos b. when they do this she ain't gonna survive Unless she escapes, so. unless well, but like she, like Leandra said, unless she kills Marcos and they take it over, yeah. So I mean, she, uh, still, if he's wrong, you're like we both know he's wrong, but like yeah. you gotta get it together. So yeah, what but was she that? would she would have to kill Mark uh, Philip too, though, because he's not having it. He's not gonna have her killing his daddy, I don't know. and then he no, he, no. Well, he's no I Hamlet, I, man. I, mean, I just, <laughs> I do like the scenes with Rosenfeld and Marcos, though. Yeah. They're very intense and they're very, I don't know, just her facial expressions when he was talking to the other ship captains and he was like avoiding her eyes, it seemed like mm. at first. 
Yeah, he was looking directly at her. So like he knew, and then she knew he was just puffing up his chest to assert his control again that he lost. Yeah. And then later after she had that conversation with Philip and was like, okay, well, I guess I'm gonna have to deal with this man myself. I know. Well, yeah, they spaced the mother once, but the other one, nah. I thought she was kidding. So <laughs> just chalk it up to my mistake. <laughs> so, so I mean, all of that was so good. He was like, that was so good. You could talk to me this way. Well, okay. Yeah. So let me ask you this, because when she went back and talked to Philip, she kind of scolded him for what he had just done to his dad. And I wonder if she's actually trying to keep them at odds with each other. Because, you know, she was pleased at what Philip said on the bridge. Right. You know that she liked what he said. And mm-hmm. then she gets back there and she chews him out and says, you know, your dad needs your help right now. She didn't even say close the door so we can talk in private. Right. She let the other guy hear. I just thought, I thought, close the door. Talk in private. So yeah. when she doesn't do that, that means that whatever conversation they have is going to go over the entire ship. She wants it to. I think she wants it to because yeah. it's showing that. She's doing, it's it's kind of showing two things like, okay, I'm trying to do everything I can to support my leader, but also I'm a leader myself Mm -hmm. by taking charge and, and trying to make the peace and make all sides get along. But I am also support, I'm not doing it as a traitor. I'm doing it to support my leader. So I think she wants that kind of thing to be heard, but then she also knows how to stroke Marcos's ego when she does defy him, but she does it in a way that then strokes his ego. So she'll say yeah. in one breath, yeah, yeah, I thought you were kidding, whatever. But you're losing face uh, against what the great leader you really are. So yeah, I'm trying yeah. to yeah. build you back up. Yes. So she yes. knows that her saying that he'll just like brush off all the other yep. crap she told him too mm-hmm. so yep. she's no. really smart and i i yes. just like her but i love the scenes with them together yeah. because i don't know there's something about their intensity when they're talking that is just really cool yeah, on the screen. yeah she's well, gonna take over that two lions go at each other you know like they're in that sexual tension i'm not gonna i mean it comes off the screen like they're right. good at it <laughs> but yeah. also also she is not afraid of him Right. He's the captain and blah blah, like like we see the other other ships and and their interactions with their people. Some of them are they're afraid of their captain. She's not afraid of him, and he's ruthless because he he ordered those men spaced after they fixed his ship. Right. Yeah, but I think that's I mean, why he I think that's why he likes her and doesn't yeah. kill her or yeah. punish yeah. her because he doesn't have anyone. To yeah. stand up to him in that way. Like Philip will do it in a childish, you know, tantrum yeah. right. way, but no one does it with intelligence and grace like she does it. So I think and, he and it admires rides, that in her. It rides that way of a sexual sexual tension and, yes. and she knows it. And um, and then, you know, he says, and was the guy who came to you to ask for their lives? Did we see space? And she said, no, that would have been foolish. Yeah. Right. We're in a war. We need to keep these good, you know, keep these good people. And um, and then so she, I, I agree that she's not scared of him. At the same time, she's not drummer, not scared of him. Right. She's going to get something out of her relationship with him. And she just told him exactly what it was. And he's not going to be around to see her get it. <laughs> that's, right. that's the thing. She's just playing her cards, playing spades, yeah. and he doesn't know that he's getting Boston right. And I mean, <laughs> she, she may not get it, though. You don't think she's going to make it? She may not get it. I mean, if they get blown off the sky, she's on that ship, too. She's on the Pella, too. So, right. So what you was know. that? What was that phrase that Drummer used when she wanted the message to go to everyone? What did she say? Oh, oh what, yeah. What was it broadband um, phrase, broadband or something like broadband? that? Broadband. That's know, right? what this the Not XO is going to do when she's got the gun to Marco's head. Hey, broadband. <laughs> yeah. 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 Over, that could be it. Yeah. We own this, right? <laughs> <laughs> I hope she does. Just because, like I said, she's a big enough actress that I would I would be kind of confused if they would bring her on just to kill her. 
But I mean, whatever. As long as you have that many more episodes to do. Mm-hmm. What did y'all I mean, think about the the, the speech that uh, that um, what's that? What's that character saying? San Johnny was given to the Belters on series well, when she I said, was, "Look." You know what? Okay, uh, but y'all need you're water. You're gonna sell your freedom for a few <laughs> sips of water, and I'm thinking, well, yeah, but water's uh, pretty but white yeah. though. <laughs> I mean, what are we gonna drink, lady? Yeah, I, who took the water in the first place, idiot? Like, right? No, I. So we it, a we Marco know, sound in there, right? But we know that not only did they uh, blow the water tanks, but but by the lady on the um the Martian uh the the the, the Mars and Navy woman that was that was up on the um yeah the platform uh she had said that they lost two brand new ships Ooh. and yes. something else and i think dang because remember in one or two episodes before that's when uh, uh, christian was like on the phone with somebody talking about yeah we're gonna have two new battleships and something by the end of the month remember so they mm-hmm. didn't, they blew up them too yeah. What? Who was she talking to on her little thing? When she, she was said, talking to the oh, Mars. Sarla doesn't want to do it. Right. She was talking to the Mars Navy mm. because okay. because they wanted to go with the Earthers mm-hmm. together a, a, a joint thing to get Medina Station. Yeah. And, and then and they said, said no. Right. And then the Mars guy said, "Well, uh, we can go it alone. We'll go alone. Yeah. yeah. So they're going to go do it." So that's probably next episode. The next battle at the yeah. ring. Absolutely. Any other favorite lines, character scenes that we missed? The only one I had left was the one with Avasarla um, and the news reporter. And the news reporter, she mm. was like, oh, you want them to know they're human. She's like, not just them. Like, she's yeah. very clearly <laughs> saying, I want to remind you mm-hmm. of the, hu- you know what I mean? And so I thought that was, we don't have to talk about it. You know, I love any scene that has her in it. So I yes. I, I think I what, thought that whole thing was like a very good thing. Like someone got her for once. I, I, the, the film that Monica was showing her, though, where they had the translator translating the belter with the cat. Hmm. I thought that was very good. Yeah. I did not realize he was talking about a cat at first when I heard she's fat and lazy because I like looked at her. <laughs> I know like, he's stroking the cat. And then I realized he was talking about the cat. And I'm like, oh, okay. I thought we were talking about Chrissy for a minute. And I was like, oh, um, I'm sorry, what? You must have been you looking down or something. Yeah. I was. I was like, no, you don't get to talk about my woman like that. I'm sorry. I know. <laughs> I gotta tell you, I you, you went that scene you're talking about, what I really liked about it was um Christian knew you could see it in her face once that she ended up agreeing with the reporter and she knew she was done, that this whole thing of just defending earth was done. And the look on her face is like, Oh crap, I've I'm lost and I've got to reorganize what I'm doing because it's not us against them that way. Right. I, I, I thought there was a lot they captured. I mean, that was like her only scene in the whole episode. And I, I thought, yeah, it was pretty powerful, you know, for what they got out of it. Well, I think she was equally moved by the film that Monica showed her mm-hmm. because, I mean, it was very, very moving. Mm-hmm. All the guy wanted was some air and water and freedom. Now, that's pretty powerful. You and know? then they show belters helping Martians, earthlings helping yeah. belters, right? And, they just... and he kept saying two or three times, I'm just so tired of the hate. Oh. Yeah. I'm tired of the hate, I, you know. I mean, that's very yes. powerful. So to me, Christian's face at that moment, once that film stopped and she was yeah. she's looking at Monica, it, it was like she was saying, Oh shit. Okay. Yeah. 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 What My do I do now? It's done. Yeah. Yeah. What do I do now? Because yeah, absolutely. Any other final lines, characters, scenes? Any comments on Nashville hot chicken? <laughs> it looked good. Ah, it looked good. That looked really good. It was and right. it did look authentic. You know, it I was in authentic. Florida. I can't speak for authenticity. I don't know about don't it. Know. Wasn't as drippy, drippy. You know, with hot sauce. Well, that's true. Before, yeah. but. So uh, we do have a little viewer mail for this evening. A dear friend of mine, a Dr. Tommaso Bertaloni. Isn't that Ooh, a beautiful name to I say? I love that name. Love Loves it. to go by the name of Tom. He writes in, this is so good. The Expanse is so perfect for this. And you guys do this so well. And I watched this episode this morning. So smiley face with big stars. He loves everything that we do. Yay, Dr. Tom. 
And then he heard us talking about Marco so much. And he said, yeah, I do agree. Marco and Arrows did kind of overstay his welcome. <laughs> so, so, Tom, we appreciate you writing in. Look forward to next time. Uh, so that does wrap it up for tonight's episode. Thanks so much for tuning in. And Expanse crew members, please tell the audience where they can find you on social media. And we'll start with Leandra. Uh, yeah, you can find me on Twitter at Paris Leandra at P-A-R-R-I-S Leandra. Fantastic. And how about you, Sister K? I guess I'll answer for both of us. Yes, I was going to say. <laughs> <laughs> Tell them, Sister K, where to get it. We're everywhere on social media. Just search for Sister Speak and we'll have podcasts pop up. We're on Patreon, Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, and uh, YouTube. So out of respect, I have to say, how about you, Sister J? <laughs> what, what's this case? What is? <laughs> there you go. You can find me on dark. Uh, you can find me on Twitter at dark underscore loops. You can find all episodes of the expanse crew at the dark loops Productions channel on YouTube. If you'd like to leave feedback about this podcast, please do so on this YouTube page or send a message to dark loops productions at gmail.com. And we'll be sure to read it at the end of our next podcast. So there it is from all of us to all of you. Big hugs. Thanks so much for tuning in. Bye-bye.